Okay, so um, disorders, we've talked a lot about asthma. There's a lot of different ways that allergy can be. Some of these are sort of uh, uh, happen through our uh, environmental exposures, uh, rapid changes in uh, nitrogen partial pressures. Uh, Bends. This is a rapid ascent uh, in a diver. Uh, actually, create uh, nitrogen being forced into blood in the form of uh, bubbles. That uh, can actually be fatal. Um, air emboli in various uh, settings can also be fatal. Uh, elevated pressures of oxygen can be useful in, in settings. One of the more interesting ones is in infection, gangrene, or, or tetanus, where a lot of those bacteria actually require a, a low oxygen environment to survive and you can actually kill them with high pressures and sometimes also sometimes if someone has carbon monoxide poisoning for example you can uh, really drive excess uh, oxygen uh, pneumonia we talked a little bit about this this is a chest x-ray of someone with pneumonia Normally the lungs are pretty transparent to x-rays. You've got your uh, heart sitting here. This is your diaphragm. Here's someone with pneumonia. A lot of things going on. Uh, a little bit focal. So you've got uh, possibly a, a left uh, uh, lung process, maybe lower. Uh, you can't see the border between the heart and lung very clearly. That's an indication of inflammation. Global uh, increase in capacity that Due to uh, inflammation, infiltrates of uh, fluid and uh, immune. Um, basically, pneumonias can be anything that inflames the lung, chemicals, infectious agents, all those can cause a problem, and you have uh, impaired uh, ventilation for that reason. I think compensations happen when you have low oxygen states. Uh, actually, see uh, studies in. Dogs. Uh, this is size dog looking at its respiratory pattern. Right here, you drop the oxygen concentration to five percent from its normal point. This uh, slowly developing increased frequency and uh, depth of respiration. Things are being measured here. Okay, you've got uh, blood pressure. You've got respiratory. actually see carbon dioxide actually dropping uh, as their lungs are working uh, harder to compensate for the low oxygen. So you're ending up with uh, an artificially low carbon dioxide because of this lower And um, what's interesting then is you can actually, if you restore normal oxygen, get an apneic period, a period where respirations uh, completely stop, and that's because Oxygen is now present, and you're no longer driving increased respiration. Uh, but now you've got a problem with your CO2, and so your body has to stop breathing for a little while in order to allow that. And so that's a common basic theme: is hyperventilation disorders cause this uh, basic uh, problem um, that affect your subsequent uh, respiratory rates. Acute intervention for that is, you know, the breathing bag uh, type thing where you can oxide levels to normalize uh, your, your blood. Talk about emphysema. As I mentioned, this is the destruction of the elastin fibers, less uh, recoil of the lungs. They can't really expand. It looks like an obstructive pattern. You also can get that with uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD. This is a gradual buildup of uh, impaired uh, diffusion, uh, uh, increased mucus and inflammation and destruction of the often associated with uh, shows up uh, with labor breathing. Bronchitis is a more acute problem, typically uh, can be. Lead to COPD or be part of COPD, but also can be present in an acute inflammatory state, uh, irritants, infections, cause increased mucus production, uh, etc. Oh. 
Tuberculosis, what does that do? Well, this is a infectious agent, mycobacterium, tuberculosis, spread through uh, uh, aerosolized uh, cough particles, lives in alveoli in the lungs. Um, and you can diagnose it uh, with a, a blood tests. Um, it takes a long time to cure, about 12 months of multiple antibiotics for FAMP and nitrogen. Uh, it's interesting, it's, you know, it's been uh, more associated with uh, uh, poor hygiene conditions, often associated with poverty. Uh, more than a million uh, people die from TB. And is falling a little bit as HIV gets more under control in areas where HIV is under control, but not where it's not, of course. Uh, again, up with uh, very high rates in. Uh, you can see uh, there are certainly where HIV is less than tightly linked to uh, poverty related conditions. And concomitant with this, there's a change in um, drug resistance uh, TB, very concerning resistance to this uh, uh, data occurring, particularly in. Uh, and uh, asthma. Delving into that a little bit more detail, basic problem there is a constriction of the bronchioles, obstructing proper exhalation of the acute precipitants. You know, you've got pollen, uh, thing that is an allergic type response can exacerbate it. Triggers mast cells, these immune cells that uh, respond to allergens and they release chemical messengers that lead to kiss of small blood vessels, uh, constriction of uh, bronchioles as a response. The way you treat it acutely, you, you know, you can adjust the sympathetic, parasympathetic balance with bronchodilators. Albuterol, for example, will sympathetic agonists that will dilate. Uh, also, anti-inflammatory things that fit mast cell uh, action are important both acutely and uh, chronically. And some people with asthma are on chronic. Uh, some people take steroids. Some people take mono clonal antibodies that inhibit IgG binding to receptors on mast cells, which is how this Last couple of minutes before we do the case study, uh, talk about cystic fibrosis. This is uh, over secretion of mucus that's due to an impaired uh, chloride uh, conductance. So it's about uh, 30,000 uh, Americans affected in the U.S. per year. Um, Total affected in the U.S. and about one in four thousand. That's present across uh, species, more uh, across races, more common in uh, Caucasian. We actually have uh, we know the gene. It was cloned in uh, 1989 by Francis Collins. And, uh, what it is, it's a it's not a, a channel, but it's a it's a pump. It's a, a, a gross transmembrane conductance regulator. Appears to be defective in terms of its folding. There are a number of different mutations that can give rise to uh, the CF different variants that can cause impairment. Now, okay, you might say, well, that was a long time ago. You know, why don't we just why aren't we just giving the CFTR back in its normal role with a adeno associated viral vector, just shooting that into the lung? I mean, be able to do that right now, right? Well. People have certainly tried that. Uh, for some reason, it doesn't work. Uh, current CFTR treatment is part of it. There are drug treatments that uh, are designed to try to help uh, fold the CFTR, allow it to be localized in the membrane better. Some of those look pretty good. Kaleidico uh, starting to look pretty good. Actually, that's now being broadly. But typical. Fibrosis treatment now is you do all of these things, okay? So it's an incredibly complex chronic disease to manage. You, do, you try some CFTR modulation, you help loosen up the, the mucus with hypertonic saline, um, digestive enzymes, uh, digest the uh, digestive enzymes, but enzymes that digest the mucus, so anti inflammatory agents, anti infective agents, because they're constantly getting infected, they've got this build. Better nutrition, uh, uh, transplantation in the end, uh, and then you've got a patient. Now, 
Then you've got physical therapy as well, you know, mechanical disruption, chronic uh, and labor intensive. Um, but, you know, this is uh, anything to add to this in terms of the treatment? Obviously, very complex. What's your best hope for the immediate future? But it seems to work really well, right? It works really well. That one did not, has not really gotten, as far as I know, has not gotten certainly the phase. This is one of the things we don't fully understand why these are not. I think it even maybe it didn't. Get. So let's leave time for the case study. Uh, the ventilation devices are uh, very simple, but I'm just going to uh, turn it over. I'll just, just point out one thing as he's coming up. This is a typical intubation device, actually. You could probably talk more about this. Need an acute uh, uh, ventilation of someone. You can say they're structured. You can stick in a little uh, endotracheal tube. Uh, if you screw up, though, you can put it into the esophagus instead. Uh, and so you've got to make sure uh, that you're doing things right. Um, you don't want to be inflating their, their, uh, their stuff. Modern uh, devices actually still have, if you put in the wrong place, you're still able to. Uh, 